You might be confused as to how sleep and memory are connected. Well, the top researchers are confused too. Sleep and memory share a complex relationship. Getting enough rest helps you recover new information once you wake up, and sleeping after learning can consolidate this information into recollections, allowing you to store them in your brain. Scientists measuring sleepiness have found that sleep loss leads to lower alertness and attention. The title must have confused you, and you might be thinking, what's sleep apnea? Well, you've come to the correct place. In order to know more, watch the whole video. Hey everyone, once again, welcome back to our channel. If you're new to our channel, then do make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss another update from our channel. Let's begin. Sleep apnea is a potentially serious sleep disorder in which breathing constantly stops and starts. However, you might have sleep apnea if you snore loudly and feel tired indeed after a full night's sleep. Sleep deprivation makes it delicate for you to concentrate and pay attention, so you are more fluently confused. This hampers your capability to perform tasks that bear logical sense or complex study. Sleepiness also impairs judgment. Now, a very obvious question coming to your mind must be, how can not sleeping affect my brain? Well, I got you there. Primarily, there are three types of sleep apnea. Obstructive sleep apnea is the more common form that occurs when throat muscles relax. Central sleep apnea occurs when your brain does not ship proper signals to the muscles that control breathing. Complex sleep apnea syndrome, also known as treatment emergent central sleep apnea, occurs when someone has both obstructive sleep apnea and central sleep apnea. Nearly half of us snore while we sleep at night, at least sometimes, and 25% are confirmed snorers. Beyond the noise and frustration of sleepmates when the sound reaches chainsaw levels, there may be something other your snoring is trying to tell you. Obstructive sleep apnea, OSA, the most common type of sleep apnea, causes abnormal muscle relaxation in certain tissues of the throat and mouth. These muscles thereafter block the airway while you sleep, intermittently cutting off your oxygen force and producing a number of negative stuff on your body. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. Obstructive sleep apnea is a more serious condition and snoring is its most common symptom. People with sleep apnea have regular incidents where they stop breathing over the course of the night. Associated with these breathing events, oxygen levels drop and it puts strain on the body. Studies show that sleep apnea cuts the volume of deep sleep that a person gets, which may intrude on the body's natural process of clearing poisonous proteins from the brain during sleep. The lack of oxygen and restorative sleep from obstructive sleep apnea can be mischievous to your health. People with obstructive sleep apnea are frequently getting acceptable sleep or enough hours in bed at night, but that sleep isn't actually restorative. The mechanism here is that if you don't breathe well, you don't cycle through all the stages of sleep. The breathing causes broken, poor quality sleep. Still, the doziness can impact just about everything you do during the day. If you're not restoring your body nightly with the rest it needs, in particular, drowsy driving can be extremely dangerous. It can have an impact on your mood and emotional capability too. Those who suffer from obstructive sleep apnea oftentimes struggle with symptoms like difficulty concentrating, remembering stuff, making opinions and replying to situations. People may also witness mood changes associated with sleep apnea, similar to perversity, increased stress, anxiety, and depression. Difficulty in attention may also make you less productive and drop your overall productivity too. Maybe the most concerning issue with unprocessed sleep apnea is that it stresses your cardiovascular system. This can put you in trouble for high blood pressure, irregular heart measures, heart attack, and stroke. There's also research that has laid out that people with sleep apnea have lower levels of GABA, a chemical in the brain. Among other stuff, this chemical works to regulate feelings and help the person to stay calm. At the same time, scientists have also found advanced situations of another chemical known as glutamate, which increases stress. The levels of these two chemicals in the brain may clarify the happening of mood swings and crankiness that many experience. Some researchers have also compared the sequence of sleep apnea on the brain to the effect of drinking alcohol. Research has shown that people with mild to moderate sleep loss have a slow response time like that of fairly drunk drivers. This type of tough fatigue can be extremely dangerous when someone is behind the wheel of a bus or operating heavy machinery. Sleep apnea may also alter the structure of your brain. <laughs> yep, that's weirdly true. When the brain is regularly starved of oxygen, as it's during periods of apnea, it seems to indeed change some corridors of the brain. Scientists studying OSA lately published papers saying that adult cases with sleep apnea 
displayed broke attention of gray matter in the cerebral area, which is accountable for reprocessing data. Their current thesis is that this measurable physical difference is accountable for dropped cognitive performance and memory. Sleep apnea may also lead to lowering your coitus drive. People who don't get enough sleep frequently have less libido. In men, this dropped coitus drive may be due to a drop in testosterone levels. There's evidence that sleep apnea causes adversity to cognitive functions like memory, logic, replying, and controlling feelings. Recent research has also laid out that it may really change the shape of the brain. The good news is that the unfriendly health effects of sleep apnea can be reversed with treatment. If you liked the video, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. But how can you self-diagnose yourself just to check if you have sleep apnea or not? Can we really self-diagnose the symptoms of sleep apnea? Yes, that's partially true. The signs and symptoms of obstructive and central sleep apnea overlap, sometimes making it difficult to determine which type you have. The most common signs and symptoms of obstructive and central sleep apneas include loud snoring, episodes in which you stop breathing during sleep, which would be reported by another person, gasping for air during sleep, awakening with a dry mouth, morning headache, difficulty staying asleep, excessive daytime sleepiness, difficulty paying attention while awake, and irritability. All right, but what are the treatments for sleep apnea? Disclaimer, before I go on to talk about the remedies and treatments, I'd suggest you describe all your thoughts and problems to your doctor. Your doctor may make an evaluation based on your signs and symptoms and a sleep history, which you can provide with help from someone who shares your bed or your household if possible. You're likely to be referred to a sleep disorder center. There, a sleep specialist can help you determine your need for further evaluation. An evaluation often involves overnight monitoring at a sleep center of your breathing and other body functions during sleep. Home sleep testing also might be an option. Tests to detect sleep apnea include nocturnal polysomnography. During this test, you're hooked up to equipment that monitors your heart, lung and brain activity, breathing patterns, arm and leg movements, and blood oxygen levels while you sleep. Home sleep tests. Your doctor might provide you with simplified tests to be used at home to diagnose sleep apnea. These tests usually measure your heart rate, blood oxygen level, airflow, and breathing patterns. If the results are abnormal, your doctor might be able to prescribe a therapy without further testing. Portable monitoring devices don't detect all cases of sleep apnea, however, so your doctor might still recommend polysomnography even if your initial results are normal. If you have obstructive sleep apnea, your doctor might refer you to an ear, nose, and throat doctor to rule out blockage in your nose or throat. An evaluation by a heart doctor or a doctor who specializes in the nervous system might be necessary to look for causes of central sleep apnea. There are also therapies and surgeries available which might help you in treating your disorder, but let's leave something for the doctor too. It's important to remember that not everyone who snores has obstructive sleep apnea, and many people are simple snorers without significant health risks. But if you're snoring habitually, it may be a good idea to see a doctor to investigate further. It's you who has to take charge of your health. If you are concerned about your sleep quality, are experiencing daytime grogginess or cognitive problems, it is time to take control of your health. Anyone who has habitual snoring should get it checked out by an ENT, particularly if they wake up gasping for air or if they never seem to be well rested. So, do you think you may have sleep apnea? Consult your doctor as soon as possible. Well, that's it for today's video. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss any updates as we keep on bringing such informative videos.